Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, my dear viewer. My name is Julian Cruiser here with NodesAren'tScary.com, and if you've spent any amount of time in the visual effects industry or in the Nuke community in general, you have probably heard about neat videos reduce noise. Without a doubt, it is the best option on the market for noise reduction for video. It can do things that other options cannot do, and it does them very easily. However, there is a major problem with this plugin, and that problem is the price. If we look at their website, you want to get a copy of Reduce Noise for Nuke, it's going to cost you almost $250, which is why in this video I would like to show you how we can roll our own Reduce Noise, replicating some of the most important functionality that it offers for absolutely free using built-in nodes that come with Nuke. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I want to show you is what the difference is between Reduce Noise and the stock denoiser that comes with Nuke. For this, I'm going to show you some very noisy footage. This is a video of me doing the limbo under a parking uh, divider thing with a rose in my mouth shot on a Hi8 video camera. This is a ca video cassette tape <laughs> that we're seeing. So plenty of noise to be dealt with here. First, let us open up Reduce Noise. And I'm just going to do a very basic noise profiling here. Very basic denoising. I'm going to select a mostly empty region, and then I'm just going to hit build profile, apply, and we're done. This took care of a lot of noise. And it looks great. The result looks great. Let's see what we can do with the default denoise plugin. If we hook this up, at a similar area here, and then adjust our denoise amount, the smoothness, the luminance blend, and the roll off, we're going to get a result that is pretty similar. It's not quite as good, but it's pretty similar. Let me show you how it's not actually as similar as it looks and why this matters. I'm going to pull up an HSV tool. And I want to show you what the issue is with the Nuke standard denoise plugin. It does a pretty good job at removing noise in the value spectrum. So brightness and darkness. However, it is not as good at removing chroma noise. And this is important because even though our eyes are less sensitive to it, the computer is not. And sometimes we want to pull a key based on chrominance. For example, if I wanted to grab just the yellow things in this scene, you know, this box over here and the paint down here and the poles and everything, I would use an HSV tool just selecting it. Let me show you the result, what we get out of the denoise plugin. This. This is a disaster, and we can sort of help this a little bit by switching to all here. So we include saturation and brightness here, but it's very noisy still. And if we plug this into reduce noise, this is where it excels. The hue and saturation channels that come out of reduce noise are buttery smooth. And this is important because our eyes are sensitive to fast changes. And if you're using the output of this HSV tool as a mask for something, for example, a grade node, your eyes are going to notice that flickering. Let's take a look at the result of using a regular Nuke denoise um, with HSV tool as a mask for a grade. Your eyes cannot ignore this. It's dancing all over the place. It's, it's, it's a mess to look at. However, if we plug the same thing into reduce noise, we get a very smooth result and your eyes don't notice it as much because it's slow. It's not flickering quickly. So, is there anything we can do to help this? And is there anything we can do to get our denoise closer to what reduced noise offers? Because it's still pretty noisy here. Yes, there is. Now, before we use any other nodes to help us out, there are some things that we can do to improve our result with just the inbuilt settings in the denoise node. Firstly, we can 
process low frequencies. If we look in our tune frequencies section here, we can process very low frequencies. This is off by default. Let's take a look at the output from our HSV tool so we can get a result. Or we can, we can see what we're doing here. If I check this, already we're getting a slightly better result here. You can see less noise up here. We can also, now this is not going to work for every piece of footage, but you can also sometimes set this to constant. That's going to help sometimes. In this case, it doesn't really help. I'm also going to crank up the chrominance gain. This is denoising for the chrominance channel. You can see with it all the way down, it looks a lot worse. With it all the way up, it's helping some. We can adjust our frequency tuning here, the gain on each of these stages to see what gives us the least amount of noise. And of course, we can adjust our smoothness more. This will help. However, there is one option that is going to make this result a whole lot better. And you can see we've killed a lot of the detail with all of the denoising that we've done here. We'll probably want to roll some of that back, but the option that I'm talking about is temporal processing. And you'll notice that this is grayed out. We can't check enable. And this is because we need an input on the motion input in order to be able to use it. So I'm going to grab a vector generator. And I'm going to plug in motion. And then I'm going to plug this into our footage. And just like that, now we can hit enable. And what this does is it allows Denoise to look at multiple frames. And I need to show you what the difference is. We set this frames to blend to two. That means it's going to look at two frames. And I'm going to boost the contrast in our image so, so that you can see what's happening here. Without temporal processing, it looks like this. With temporal processing, it looks like this. Before, after, before, after, and we can crank this up even more. We can change frames to blend to three. We can turn up our frame blending to 0.5, and look at that. The amount of improvement that that gives is crazy, and I wouldn't go above 0.5 on frame blending. You're gonna get some weird artifacts after that, but it, up until then, it works amazingly. And now you can see we're getting closer to reduce noise. Still not as perfect. We can sort of try and take down our uh, smoothness here a little bit more, maybe reduce our... Uh, and play with it a little bit, but honestly, a lot of the times, you're not even after a crisp and smooth result. You just want something that HSV tool is going to like and not produce a super noisy mat like this. And you'll notice that even after all that tweaking, we still have a noisy mat. And that's because I haven't shown you my secret trick yet. This is the most important part. So the reason that it looks bad, <laughs> this mat, is because we're still getting a noisy hue and saturation channel. We can see this if we grab a color space node and sort of swap our color space here to the HSV um, color space. If we look at our red channel, this is our hue space. If we look at our green channel, this is our saturation. And this, if we look at our blue, this is our value. So the value looks good. It doesn't look noisy. The hue and saturation? This is terrible. And let me show you what it looks like from reduced noise. It is easily much better, so much smoother. I want to show you how we can get this result without using reduced noise. We have to use a node called Time Blur. And what we're going to do is just apply this Time Blur to the hue and saturation channels. We're going to leave our value alone because Denoise does a good job at affecting the value. We just want our hue and saturation changed. So I'm going to plug this Time Blur into our Denoise here, plug our color space into the Time Blur, you can see, if I change our shutter here to 3, and I change our shutter offset to centered, already our hue channel looks so much better. This is without, 
and this is width. Look at that. This is promising. And now, if we grab the same color space transform here and put it on our other output, what we can do is just shuffle in using a shuffle node and shuffle in our time blurred hue and saturation channels by selecting um, in A here. We grab our R RGB. This is red channel is hue. Replace our hue channel from the B input. Green channel is saturation. Replace our saturation channel from the B input. And now what we have is a combined image where the value is unaffected by the time blur, but the hue and saturation are. And we can simply swap this back around with another color space node to put it back in normal order. And now look at what we have. You'll notice that if I shuffle this, take, take the shuffle off, it doesn't look that much different. It looks about the same, right? It's not. I want to show you the difference in the HSV tool. Without the shuffle, without the time blur, it looks like this. With the time blur, it looks like this. It's smooth, finally. And now, if we look at our grade with the mask, you don't notice it. You don't notice all the buzzing. Well, I mean, it's still a little bit noticeable. We could sort of tune our HSV tool a little bit to not include so much of these other areas. But look at this. The improvement is crazy. I'm going to disable shuffle here. And yeah, look at all this flickering. We don't have that anymore. And with that, that is all I have to show you in this video. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you learned something, a like, a comment, or a subscription would be much appreciated. Once again, my name is Julian Cruiser here with nodesaren'tscary.com, and I will see you in the next one.